In today's video, we're checking out one of the most affordable and impressive prime lenses if you're an APS-C shooter. This is the TT Artisan 56mm f1.8 Prime. Now this is great for both video and photographic purposes because we get autofocus motors that work beautifully. This lens has surprised me to no end when it comes to its performance and we're going to talk about that throughout this video. Before we get into it, a huge thank you to TT Artisan for setting this out. Just to let you know, they're not paying me to make this video and all thoughts about this lens are my own. I'll give you my thoughts about it throughout this video. We're going to kick things off with a sample reel shot using this lens on my Sony FX30. Let's get into it. Let's talk quickly about this focal length. So 56 millimeters on this APS-C lens actually works out to 84 millimeters, which is that classic, or right in the ballpark of that classic 85 portrait focal length. And this allows you to get really great portrait photography. It's also great for sit down interviews. If you're interviewing someone, for example, it just gives you a really great framing. Now just know if you plan on using this lens handheld for video, being that it doesn't have optical image stabilization, you might notice some micro jitters depending on the camera system that you're using. And on the FX30, I definitely noticed that. I got my best results shooting with this with a gimbal. So just keep that in mind. Let's talk about background blur and subject separation. So if you're looking for a lens that can completely blow out the background, if you need it, this is the lens to go for. That classic portrait focal length gives you really nice compression and a really smooth background blur. I also love the fact that the bokeh balls, whether we're shooting in night or if there's specular highlights in the background during the day, they give you nice big round orbs. Now sure, they're probably not the most pristine bokeh balls I've ever seen, but I really like the character of this lens. I think it looks really good as you can see from these samples on screen. At the time of filming, this comes in at 168 US dollars or 259 Australian dollars, which is insane value for a lens with autofocus motors it still has a metal construction. It may look plastic on screen, but it actually is metal. Now, this isn't the same sort of metal construction I've seen on some of the manual focus TT Artisan lenses, but it's still great that it's built the way that it is. And of course, we get autofocus motors. We're gonna talk about the autofocus in just a moment, but it's very reliable if you set your camera up properly. It's every bit as reliable as way more expensive lenses in my collection. And for the price, I think the optical quality is sensational. One of the big compromises usually with less expensive lenses is that they can suffer from a lot of chromatic aberration. That's that blue or purple fringing you tend to see in the out of focus areas. This lens hardly has any to the point where I didn't even notice it in my test samples. Now, some could argue some of the bokeh balls have a blue or purple tinge to them, but I really think this lens excels when it comes to handling chromatic aberration. And for this kind of price point as well, it outperforms far more expensive lenses in my collection, which is insane. Here's the box that the lens comes with. It's padded beautifully and it comes with some documentation on the inside. Now, when it comes to the lens here, we get this lens hood option and we also get a standard lens cap, but just know you can't use both of these at the same time. So it's one or the other. You can't just put this on and then keep the hood on as the hood goes on this way, which is really interesting. I haven't seen another lens with this particular type of option before, but I love the look of this once you actually get it on. And it's so cold out here, my hands are freezing, so I'm stumbling a bit, but basically that's how it looks with the actual lens hood on. Now, if we take a look at the rear lens cap here, we also get the mount, looks really nice. This has a USB-C port on it. So if you wanna update the firmware, the great news is all you have to do is leave the lens attached to this, hook it up to your computer, drag and drop the new firmware file into a drive that will appear on your desktop, and that's it. It's nice and simple, and the firmware update process is a breeze. We get a 52 millimeter filter thread on the front, so if you wanna use your favorite ND filters, you can. And I was using my Hater Pro 2 on all of the test samples you saw at the start and throughout this video. It's just a really good match. The weight of this lens only comes in at 240 grams, so it's nice and light. This is another benefit to APS-C lenses and APS-C bodies. You can keep the overall size and weight down. Another thing to take note of with this lens is there's no bells and whistles whatsoever. So we don't get an autofocus manual focus switch. So you'll need to use your camera to switch between different modes. There's no custom function buttons. There's no aperture ring. There's just a focus ring. But the great news is the focus ring feels really good to use. And if you like to switch to manual focus from time to time, you'll have no problems using this. 
Even though it is focused by wire, it still feels really premium. Another area this lens completely surprised me in was sharpness. I did a bunch of test shots up against the brick wall and whether I was shooting at f1.8, stopping down at f2.8, f4 or f8, I didn't notice a difference in the center. These sharpness tests completely surprised me and if you're a photographer wanting to get something nice and sharp but still blow out the background, this lens will do a really great job. While the FX30 doesn't have a mechanical shutter, I was still able to capture some really sharp images. Check out the detail on the swan's back. And on this shot, I managed to get the head in focus. These were all shot using autofocus. The great news is this lens does have great autofocus motors that keeps up with the action. So if I'm moving toward or away from the camera, it's going to track me no problems at all. The only small issue I found with this lens is if you want the fastest autofocus and you turn the speed and sensitivity up, it's going to kind of double take and pulse on the background as I jump out of frame. But I've actually just now set the speed and sensitivity lower. So I've got the sensitivity set to three and the speed set to four and it pulls focus nice and smoothly. But if you want the best autofocus performance, you still have to go for a native Sony prime lens like the 55 millimeter F1.8. That won't give you any sort of pulsing or second guessing when it comes to jumping in and out of frame. But what I'm showing you right now is the optimum settings, at least with the Sony FX30, and it's doing a really great job. If you're doing a product showcase where you're holding something in front of your face, it's also going to work as well. It won't, again, be quite as fast as the native Sony Primes, but it still does a really great job in these sort of situations. All right, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison with the TT Artisan lens at f1.8 against the Sony Zeiss 55mm f1.8, both at f1.8, and I'll jump between these shots so you can get a good sense of how they compare. Now the Zeiss lens is legendary when it comes to shooting video. This lens has a really premium look to it, but it'll be interesting to see whether or not there's a huge difference between a lens, at least in Australia, that costs around eight or 900 bucks up against a lens that's about $250. <laughs> so let us know if you can see a huge difference. I hope this section of the video helps. If it does, please leave a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. While this lens has surprised me to no end, there's two things you need to know about it. So first up, it suffers from pretty heavy focus breathing. And if you're a video shooter, this can be quite distracting. So if you're pulling focus from minimum to infinity focus, it looks like the edges of frame are zooming in almost a third of the way. I'm not exactly sure how far it's zooming in, but you can see from these examples on screen, just how heavy the focus breathing is. Even if you have a camera like the Sony FX30 that has focus breathing compensation, this lens isn't supported because it's not a native Sony prime lens. So just keep that in mind. Secondly, the minimum focus is limited to 50 centimeters, which isn't that close. And if you like to shoot flowers or close up photos of products and all that kind of stuff, you can't get too close in and sort of get a big magnification. So you'll be limited to standing quite a ways back and the flower or subject in the shot will still be quite small. So just keep those two things in mind. All right, let's wrap this video up. I'm gonna give you my final thoughts on the TT Artisan 56 millimeter F1.8 Prime. I'm gonna put this in the best of 2024 with my annual end of year wrap up this year. This lens has surprised me to no end. Value for money, I think this is unmatched. While there's no autofocus, manual focus switch or aperture ring or anything like that, it's a very simple lens. The focus ring feels great. The optical quality is great. It's nice and sharp in the center, even shooting at f1.8. So it gives you a lot of really great functionality and usability. The only small critiques, as I mentioned, it's got pretty heavy focus breathing and the fact that the minimum focus is somewhat limited. Otherwise, this lens is in a league of its own for its price. It's not even close. I don't think I've used another lens that represents this great value for money with having autofocus motors. So TT Artisan, well done on producing a lens that I could see a lot of people using for the Sony FX3 or any other number of APS-C cameras out there. If you've got an X or Z mount camera, you can use it as well. Now the autofocus will vary on different systems. I've only tested the Sony one, but I could trust it in most shooting situations as long as I have the speed and sensitivity at or below four, and then you're good to go. But any higher than that, it can start to create some problems with bouncing and pulsing, especially if you're moving around in the frame. But otherwise, this lens is great. I really like it. I think it's one of the best lenses of 2024. Thanks again for watching. My name's Shane. I will catch you in the next video. See ya.